Hello, everybody. We're back. We're back. Paul and John here, but today is a little more special for one reason. Our guest. We have a guest. Michael Swingin. Michael, hello. Our first guest. My name's Steve. Steve. <laughs> Whoops. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you got the first part right. Yeah, you're doing well so far. Hi, hello. Good, good, Michael. Michael Swingin is a... Uh, Currently a journalist in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I would describe him as a creative genius, as well as a 38th Street original. Hey. Oh, I didn't know you knew that phrase. 38th Street original? Mm Mm-hmm. I thought I just made it up. Oh. You didn't. Well, anyway, Michael, welcome to the podcast. Um, Thanks. Thanks for having me. Today... I've got a little surprise for the both of you, and it has something to do with this book here. Michael, you can't see it, but it goes by the name America's Snake. Got it. Trip down memory lane. Trip down memory lane. It's a big book. It's a big book. I still have not read it. A good read. You've read it. I read it. It's very red. The the dust jacket. It's very red. It's very (laughs) angry. Right. The, it the is. The front cover is a, uh, a a coiled up American timber rattlesnake, so I guess it would make sense to uh, have the color palette red and angry like that. Right. Yeah. Spot on. As one would expect for for an American timber rattlesnake. Yes. Everybody knows what those are. So I want to I want to have Michael get into the to why I'm bringing this up a little bit, but first I just have to say to you and Michael that this week marks the four-year anniversary of the final draft of the documentary oh, we man. made about this book. Wow. Whoa. It's been, That's crazy. It's been four years already, which is... That honestly yeah. feels it, like nine years yeah, ago. I thought we like edited time. it for like eight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it feels, it feels a, a long, long time, a lot more than four. <laughs> I agree. Wow. Spring chickens. Spring chickens. Well, it was it was around this time. Yep. Dang. Hmm. Yeah, I remember. I remember the. Yeah, the editing session was very grueling. <laughs> so, Lots of uh, uh, all nighters and red, uh, veiny eyes by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, early mornings too before work as well as. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. So, Michael, to uh, before we get really into this, I. I really would just want to go back down memory lane and talk about the trip we took to New Hampshire and the whole process of making that video and just go through some of the fun times that we had. But to give all seven of our viewers a little bit of context, could you just explain why, just quickly why this came to be, why and how this came Mm -hmm. to be? Yeah, definitely. I can do that. Um, At the time, I was living out on the East Coast. I was living on a a farm in in Vermont, uh, going to school just across the river in New Hampshire. Um, And this guy I was living with just published this book that we're talking about. um, Ted. uh, Yeah, Ted Levin. Uh, Ted Levin just published this book, uh, The American, America's Snake. Um, And... I noticed he was talking about how the book was getting some heat. Some people were pissed off about the book because it was uh, creating some trouble in the the snake community, basically. Uh, People who study snakes, uh, whatever. Anyway, at the same time, uh, Paul here was starting up this kind of video company. And I guess it's just how my brain works. I thought, well, it seems like it's possible to make a little documentary thing about Ted and, uh, and his book and the, the in real time kind of controversy uh, surrounding it. And I just, again, I, I just want to emphasize it. It seems possible, actually possible to do this. So I'm like, let's, let's just try. So we, we made this documentary thing. Yeah. I I think I met Ted before we ever, you ever thought to do this. And he was like 
the coolest, most normal guy, like whatever. He was my first. He was my first impression of a New Hampshire silver fox, and I totally. just felt like um, he was the most normal guy. Like had all kinds of other hobbies besides, you know, what you might uh, connect a naturalist with. But yeah, anyway, he was a really cool guy. So that uh, that all led up to a eight day cross country. I don't know how many days. Six day. Yeah, I forgot how kind of an, uh, a long an epic day. odyssey. Yeah, an epic odyssey. <laughs> I'd have a lot more trouble explaining what that was about. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I. Uh, so we. I guess we were we were in North Dakota and. He was in New Hampshire, so he decided just just to road trip it and sh- uh, shoot some film along the way. I guess. I think at the time Paul was talking about he was having this revelation that um, I don't exactly know how to explain it. That uh, like shooting, filming process uh, process things it was popular, uh, meaning like shooting things behind the scenes. Uh, people like that. They like to see how things are made. They like to see behind the scenes. They like to see process stories. I think that in a, when Paul said that, that stuck in my brain and I've noticed that's true. Like you'll, you'll watch a commercial and you'll see like, they'll be filming a camera that's shooting the commercial, you know, uh, and the guy behind the camera, stuff like that. And I think maybe that idea was kicking around in our skulls, and so, so we thought we'd like film us going there. Um, if it, if any of this is making any sense, we we definitely had about four or five percent of the project thought out by the time we hit Canada. Yes, if that's I true. remember correctly, or like we had, or like and or. We had like 50 different versions of the <laughs> film in our That's heads true. At, yeah. at the same time. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's my attempt to explain where the, the road trip came from. Yeah. But then there, were, there was also some, uh, I think there were some more logist- logistical reasons, like a guy we were interviewing was in, in, was in Chicago. Oh, yeah, Levy. So it's like, right, uh, right, so... <laughs> That's right. Just like I we'll, that. we'll knock him out on the way. Um, I think that was another reason. Yeah, we were actually filming some of the road trip, and that that was completely cut out of the final the final piece, the final film. Yeah, that had that, that like had nothing to do with anything. Yeah. <laughs> I remember there there's footage somewhere of us like outside of like Chicago in front of the Chicago sign, like you know me giving a thumbs up or something. Uh, right. But yeah, none of that got into the final draft. So as we're talking about this, I'm remembering all the, not only like crazy things we got to see and do, but the people we got to meet. And we could, we could talk about these people on a separate podcast for many, many hours, (laughs) like we have done in person. But one thing I, I have never asked you, Michael, um, is how do you think that the project actually went? Like, how do you think that the the final version turned out compared to what you expected in the beginning, but also just as a whole, from like an outsider's perspective, how do you think um, it went? My my honest opinion is that it it went very well um, because the the biggest piece of evidence I have for for that claim is that we finished it and there's an actual product and it's it's uh on the internet and on a website called rain taxi so we actually finished the thing uh i was always fully aware that none of us had done this before and i i had no illusions that it was going to be some kind of crazy masterpiece uh thing or something i just thought again i just i can't stress enough it's like i it was possible to do this project and I wanted to see what would happen if we actually tried doing it. And I knew it would be a learning process for all parties involved. Um, I knew 
well, I'm not, I shouldn't speak for anyone else, but I, I hope Paul learned something from it that he, he understood that he kind of, he sharpened his, he honed, he honed his storytelling skills a bit. He figured something out technically with the editing process, whatever. Um, we, we, we rewatched this some months back and it, it was, it was, it was logical that it was coherent to the story. Um, and I, I think all I wanted out of it was if, you know, if in the future, if another opportunity comes around where you want to, you know, tell a story documentary style, you know, whatever the hell, go all gonzo, um, do, you know, immersion journalism or tell some crazy story that's happening in your hometown. Like, I don't know, some soccer mom, you know, goes crazy and kills her whole family. <laughs> You know, you can be like, hey, I've, I've done a documentary before. Like, I can tell this story. Like, here's some proof. Here, you know, that's all I wanted out of it. And I think that's what we got out of it. So I, I think it was pretty successful. Um, I'm willing to hear otherwise, but I guess that's my take on it. I think, I think watching it, what was it over like Christmas or something we watched it? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. It's just like when, when you're like, it's probably like with anything, but when you're immersed and you've memorized the words on every single little strip of piece of paper that we cut out and you're like, oh, should we have gone in this order? Should we really have cut this out? Is it too long? Is it too short? But like, obviously since then I've completely forgotten what anyone said and it was, it was nice to watch it without being in the middle of it. And I thought, I was actually kind of surprised that it, like you said, was logical. It was definitely overall probably really poorly done, really poorly planned, but I think like the variety of stuff that we got and the variety of characters that we got was rather impressive given the time that we had to do it. But yeah, speaking of the characters, it was like, you know, this this crazy, you know, uh, snake freak named Kevin. Uh, what was his last name? It was some like Irish thing, wasn't it? Mick? McCurley. McCurley, God, even his name is ridiculous. Yeah. And he created this whole, like, you know, nuclear silo full of lizards and, and aquarium tanks. And it was, and he was, he had this encyclopedic knowledge of, you know, reptiles and raptors and things like that. And yeah, I mean, he was a pretty good character to find. And, and, and he had a certain, he had a, he had a very specific way of talking, you know, so yeah. it was, he was interesting to listen to him. Um, and you so almost yeah, didn't was, get him. We tried. Uh, you tried a lot to get a hold of him, and it finally worked out. I didn't. In, re, in yeah. retrospect, it kind of seems impossible that we did because you like sent the video for his approval, and I don't know all this stuff. It just was really hard to get a hold of. But he was. He was. He definitely. He was huge. If the video was worth anything, he definitely made the video. Mm -hmm. Michael, what was your favorite memory? Besides sharing a tent with, with Paul and I for four days, a one-person tent for four days, um, what, what was your favorite memory from that whole trip? Shout it. Okay, I was hoping you'd say that. I was hoping you'd say that, and we don't Sorry. need to elaborate. Because no one's going to understand. Second favorite memory. Second favorite. Um, no, let me think. Um, I don't know if this is the answer you're looking for. I don't know if this answer is too like abstract or something, but um, I just liked, uh, I just, I just loved being in the heat of the moment, trying to do something creative with, with people I like. Um, and again, it's like, you're, you're, you're in the heat of the moment. You're like, you know, you're trying to work something out creatively. You're trying to, you know, figure out how to tell this story and you're doing it with people you like and the, you're, the subject matter you like, you know, you like working with, I liked working with Ted. I liked working with mm -hmm. Kevin McCurley. I just, I just, I just thought it was, it was fun. It was fun driving to, um, Kevin's headquarters in New Hampshire. It was fun going to Ted's, uh, farm farmhouse it was fun going to dartmouth you know watching paul oh uh 
set up a shot, you know, where he just has this very, you know, uh, front facing shot of Ron or library. We go inside Ron or library. I watch Paul set up this camera apparatus, you know, above this, you know, uh, invaluable, you know, book that costs, you know, a, a million dollars and, you know, we get the shot. Uh, you know, I watch John, you know, uh, you know, wrangle a boom mic on a canoe. Um, it was all, it was just, it was, I just liked the experience. I liked watching how people handled it, what they did. Um, so it's just little things like that, I guess. Um, I hope that's a good enough answer, you know. You just, you brought back like three things that I had completely forgotten about, honestly. Mm-hmm. And I would like to share the story of the... Uh, <laughs> What's the book we were going to talk about how we've tried to improve since and yeah. the Audubon book. Yeah, the Audubon. I don't know if you remember this, Michael. Um, yeah. It was really embarrassing, <laughs> actually. <laughs> One of arguably, well, definitely could have been our most costly mistake. Yeah. Not, in, not even in our business, but in our life. That could have been over. Um, <laughs> and again, I don't, re- I don't know if you remember this, Michael, but when we were setting up that shot, so the Audubon, can you explain what the Audubon is? Uh, Audubon for for the five of you left. Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> ancient book, well, two hundred year old book of of this famous naturalist painting named James Audubon. There's only like four of them in the world, and they're massive, and they're these reprints of or whatever. I don't even know what the terminology is, but big, huge paintings of uh, birds, birds and, and other. Mammalia, right? So, yeah. so we had this giant book, ancient, one of a kind. Yeah, oh, one of a kind book, laid out on this table. This guy had to bring it out. We had to call on this guy. He comes out with white, white, white gloves. gloves. Yeah. He takes it out from like a super safe vault yeah. within Dartmouth's <laughs> library or something, and he he lays it out on this table and like carefully <laughs> turns each page until we're like page two hundred and forty two or whatever. It was like a, it was like a, a ceremony. Yeah, it was like a p- turning of the page. It really was. Like yeah. we were honored Dude, to yeah. be in that room. So then we uh, we wanted to get a sweet like top down <laughs> shot. So we set up two tripods on this nice table, and and uh, laid across basically just a board <laughs> <laughs> across across the uh, the two tripods, and we set the camera up in a way on that board facing downward so we can film this book. And we had a tablet up there so that we could see what we were filming. And as soon as we press <laughs> as soon as we press record, that tablet just takes a plunge <laughs> straight down and onto the Audubon, just this four million dollar book. And uh the guy, the guy, the librarian. Just yeah, a, let's uh, yeah. not do that again. <laughs> like, oh, oh man, I just peed myself. Uh, and uh, the slapping. best part, the best part of that for me was that that four million dollar book like cushioned the fall of our fifty dollar right. tablet. <laughs> it just saved the day. Thank you, Audubon. Dude, Thank wow. You so it was. Uh... Yeah, it went both ways. That's good. Yeah. You know, yeah, that was one of the one of the things I cherished most about getting in getting it into the film was that book. Um, but another thing I thought was pretty cool was how we got on, onto that canoe. I was just know? gonna say that. Mm. That, that was, was so cool. cool. <clears throat> that turned that actually turned out really well. Of all yeah. the things that we filmed, that, that turned out really well, surprisingly. And he, and he said a lot of the most profound things yeah. there, too. Yeah. I thought, uh, here, here's one thing I kind of remember distinctly from, from the, the end product. It's kind of surreal. It's like actually like literally surreal. John, you picked up some like audio of like the water lapping when we were on the Connecticut River. And Paul decided to, I don't know what this is called. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm an idiot when it comes to, I'm actually like in all, in all reality, I'm an idiot when it comes to this kind of stuff, but okay. So we have a, a, a 
shot a scene where we're on the river, you know, Ted's talking about some snake shit. Um, me and him both have a paddle. And you can hear the water lapping as we paddle down the river. And it was like somehow Paul edited it where that, that water lapping, you could hear it on the the, uh, the next shot, even though the, the visuals were gone. So it was like you could still hear the water lapping, even though we were now in Ted's house, you know. And I just, I don't know, I just thought that was a cool little editing trick. Um, I know this probably sounds so insanely basic. I'm kind of now embarrassed. But so anyway, so now whenever I watch uh, shows or a movie, I see how they kind of uh, introduce the next scene uh, oh, audibly. They, no, they no, start no. having the audio going before they actually switch visually to the next scene. And the first time I actually noticed that was a thing was when I watched Paul do it for our documentary film, I guess. Yeah, I can't remember that. That's just such a nice sound. It was a really nice sound. Yeah, yeah, that was like, that was yeah. probably the, yeah. <laughs> I like, mean, that sound in general is just no. like what doesn't get a lot better. No, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> also, all the snakes that we got to see. We did see a lot of snakes, actually. Genetically modified. Wow, I forgot about that. Call, call me... Crazy, but were some of them like 20 feet long, <laughs> right? Yeah. In that one room? Dude, I, I remember, yeah, Kevin, Kevin, uh, he, yeah, he would like make albino pythons and shit like that. Just, remember that? Some, yeah. Basically just like freely roaming around that facility. Yeah. Well, some of the things were. I remember stepping yeah. over a bright yellow. You did? It was like that thick, oh. right? I, no, the, yeah, those ones were really big. The colorful ones were mm -hmm. really big. Yeah, and then there were like chickens wandering around, mm -hmm. like in the corridors of his yeah laboratory. But if we never uh, went there, we would have not had any snake footage for yeah, the snake right. documentary. That would have been, yeah, and it almost didn't happen too. Why? Yeah, that's that's going right. There? Yeah, I remember. Oh, that. Ha going there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was stoked to. Put that snake in the grass for us. Mm -hmm. It made it seem like we found it, but mm -hmm. we didn't. Yep. Movie magic. Movie magic. Movie magic. And then uh, I'm I'm just kind of remembering this now, but then, yeah, John. I think John left early uh, from New Hampshire, and then and then Paul and I we we road tripped back, and then we <laughs> stopped Jefferson. and got the footage uh, with the rain taxi stuff in Minneapolis. Eric. Oh yeah. That's right. Yeah, it was just like, yeah, that was a weird, that was that was a weird thing with the film. So we had to like frame it as a, a book review. But I guess I don't know. That's just what. <laughs> it's just what happened, I guess. That's what you do, man. Well, Michael, my uh, my keep us on track timer went off eleven minutes ago, and I know that you're a, you're a busy guy and you have things to do, but I do want to give you one. One more chance to say anything else that may have just popped into your head about this trip, about life, about 38th Street, <laughs> anything really. And then we will let you go. Or we can keep talking for another hour. I'm still waiting for the snakes and such payoff where... You know, we can do another story like that, but uh, but in our neck of the woods, you know, do it about someone or something uh, in, in North Dakota, some, you know, some interesting story. Um, but I don't know, I'm still trying to figure this out myself. It's like, it's, it's, you can't really like will these projects into being. You know, these projects, they kind of fall into your lap, so to speak. You just have to be ready for it. But it's, I don't know, it's hard to kind of artificially get them going because um, then they don't really pan out. You kind of have to sit and wait. And that that uh, that sitting and waiting, you know, frustrates me. Mm -hmm. But but in any case, I'm still, yeah, waiting for, uh, for the, you know, our snakes and such, you know, version 
that we can do in uh, Grand Forks, that we can do in North Dakota. Hopefully it'll happen sooner rather than later. Agreed. I like that you, of course you would find a subject like the Emperor of America. That story you did was great. And we should like, if we do any links, we should link that. But Yeah, for sure. Did you listen to it? No, I just heard. Yeah, heard it was really good. You know, maybe the, I don't know, maybe the snakes and such thing was a, was a colossal waste of time for you guys, but it did, it did, it, it did lead me to this, to this next, my next project that I did in, uh, in San Francisco. Yeah. Which was pretty cool. I, I definitely wouldn't have gotten that gig and have been able to have told that story if it wasn't for snakes and such and, and Ted and John A and all of that. So, <laughs> well, us, so, us too, the, some of the mistakes we made on that trip are, are uh, cornerstones, building blocks of some of the things we, some of the yeah. things we go by today. So, yeah. Oh, that's us. what you're saying. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. We. That was. Uh, I think we ground down a lot of or exposed a lot of issues. Yeah. In doing that, I don't know. That was, and it's not like we do documentaries all the time or necessarily want to, but that, like you said, that's something that should fall in your lap, not something you should pursue really, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's some weird, uh, some uneasy, it's some very uneasy marriage between sitting and waiting and, and somehow magically, you know, willing things into motion at the same time. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we appreciate that one falling into your lap <laughs> and bringing us along for the ride. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad to hear you guys got something of it as well. Uh, it, was, it was a good time. It was, uh, it was a worthwhile time, I think. Agree. Agreed. But yeah, thank you, Michael. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, until next time. Yeah. Until next time. And uh, don't catch on fire yeah I'll, I'll i'll try not to that's yeah that's kind of the, the trend these days on the west coast is just you know catching on fire but, um, <laughs> i'll try to be a maverick and, and uh, <laughs> go my own way on that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right okay talk to you later thanks, thanks. again all right. bye. all right see ya